Oh, baby, there's only a few days left to get my super secret Joy-Con color changing shaker cup. Use code BEATEMUPS, links down below. Thank you. The Nintendo Switch 2. It's crazy to think, but this time next year, we'll probably know what it looks like and what it does and be playing Zelda Breath of the Wild 4, Tears of the Electric Boogaloo in 3D. But what if I told you I already have the Nintendo Switch 2? Well, that would be disgusting clickbait and I would deserve to be gagged and bound, not in the good way. I think it's pretty obvious what Nintendo are going to do next, but that doesn't mean there still isn't a ton of mystery surrounding the new Nintendo Switch attached system. Like, how do the multiple removable screens work? And are both the screens in 4K or just one? Crazy enough, I'm not making any of that up. So I'm gonna reveal to you right now for the first time the Nintendo Switch Two. And I want to do it now before Nintendo reveals what it actually looks like. So that in six months, we can all come back to this video and leave a comment down below about how insanely accurate I was. See you in six months. Okay, I'm kind of pissed. I've been working on this damn video for over a month. I wrote the video on March 26, 2024. I recorded it April 7th. I sent the files to my editor, Zach, April 8th. I hired... 3D graphic model designers to make mock-ups of my perfect Nintendo Switch. And I sent that to them on April 16th. And we are finally almost ready to release this banger of a video and what happens today but a bunch of leaks about the Switch 2 and it is unbelievably close to so many things I talked about in this video. It's gonna seem like I just copied this and I Swear to God I didn't. I had a mustache in all of that footage. The stinky old Nintendo Switch 1 released seven years ago. So of course, for the last six years and 11 months, YouTubers and news outlets have been clickbaiting us with these fake Switch 2 model renders, which some of them aren't even trying. I mean, look, you got the two screens, the flip screen, the slide, the really round Joy-Cons, the thin Switch, the XL Switch, and then the thin dock. Ah, to be fair, I always, kind of like the thin dock one. And this one is very clearly just AI art. I don't know why you'd need that many thumbsticks. I thought AI was smart. The next Switch is kind of a tricky thing to predict because it's a hybrid. It's both Nintendo's home consoles and portable consoles come together. And with the home consoles, there was no knowing what Nintendo was going to do next. I mean, we had the NES and then Super Nintendo, but after that, we had this thing, that thing, the Wii, and then Ugh. Even though it shared the same name as the Wii, it was a completely different concept for a console. You could say the Switch was just a streamlined Wii U, but that's because it merged with the handheld market. And if you want to look at the handheld market, that was pretty much the same thing from the start. It's just each iteration, they added things like color, more pixels, 3D. But at their core, they were always just the next handheld upgrade. So with the Switch 2, do they do a home console mesh up mix around or do they do the same old, same old? I think they do a little a bit of both, but it'll still be a hybrid console. I think that much is obvious. And that's my first real write it down, jot it in the notebook, hybrid handheld. Ah, get out of here, you dumb shark. I gotta talk about a smart shark. Surf shark. A VPN. Surfshark VPN is the best virtual private network you can get. Think of it like you're going to a busy club, right? Thousands of people, and hey, keep it down over there but you get let into the private VIP room where it's just you and your friends that you trust. You don't gotta be out there on the dance floor being coughed all over, getting a virus. And if you do get a virus, use Surfshark's antivirus. A VPN will mask everything you do online, encrypting your data in a secure tunnel, keeping everything safe. So like when you're shopping online, you're logging in a Walmart to buy a HDMI cord, you put your credit card details in, then a week later, all your money from your bank is gone. Yeah, thanks, Walmart. Walmart. But there's a lot of fun things that you can do with the VPN too. Like, I am Australian, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. And I like to go back and watch some Australian TV shows that I just can't get here. The best way to do that is to use a VPN, throw myself in the great land down under, and then log into Netflix or other Australian streaming sites and watch all of the great Australian shows I used to love and show them to Kim. Kimmy. 
Look at me, please. Look at me, Kim. There's so many other reasons to pick Surfshark VPN, like safety on public Wi-Fi, better deals while shopping. You only need one account and you can download Surfshark and log in on all of your devices. So secure your network and privacy right now. Don't wait. You can get three months free by clicking the link down below and using code beatemups. Or you can go to surfshark.deals forward slash beatemups and that'll do the same thing. But you better hurry up because those sharks are coming back. Nintendo has found their stride on the Switch and they were able to create a console that was accessible to everyone, everywhere, all the time. To do anything other than that is literally taking a step back. The new thing is just gonna be the Switch again. But souped up, souped up how? You might be asking though. Gonna get a little tech, not that technical, cause I'm dumb. And if I can stomach this, you can too. But it uses an Nvidia graphics chip. So most likely Nintendo is gonna partner with Nvidia again on the next console. But with the Switch, they just use a generic NVIDIA chip and it was very flexible and it got the job done. But imagine if NVIDIA actually designed a graphics chip with the Switch 2 in mind. That could be something that Nintendo and other developers could really use to push the Switch 2 to its limits. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's probably not gonna have 4K, right? What if I told you it's not as unrealistic as you would think? I know it's crazy to think that because even on the powerful PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X consoles, they struggle to give us games at 4K, anything above a locked 30 frames. Also, Nintendo might not even care about 4K. I mean, it's Nintendo. They're always one step backwards. Though I will say, it feels like that one step backwards is right now, with the Switch not being able to do 4K when we all have 4K televisions at this point. You could get a 4K TV for less than what the Switch costs. I think it's in Nintendo's best interest to figure this out. And what if I told you the technology is already there? Nvidia's Shield uses AI up upscaling. It's not true 4K, but it makes it so if we do want to sit back and relax in our couch and play a game on the TV, it doesn't look horrible. And if you still think it's improbable that Nintendo would cram that kind of technology into the Switch, don't forget we have a dock. You might know when you put the Switch into the dock and throw it to your TV, it does boost the image. It gives you some more resolution. For the longest time when I first had the Switch, I thought it's because the dock had some kind of special thing in it making that happen, but it's literally just because the Switch is docked and can connected to a constant power supply. That allows it to just do more and not worry about draining battery like crazy. Well, what if on the Switch 2, the dock could actually do more? What if all of that upscaling technology is hidden away in the dock? I think it's more likely the graphics chip inside the Switch will probably just have that technology baked into it at all times anyway. It's food for thought. Either way, the Switch 2, it won't be able to compete with Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5. Even the souped up Steam Deck and ROG Ally handhelds can't do that. We expecting that from Nintendo, but rumors on Nintendo's next console is gonna square up pretty nicely against the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One X, and that's more than enough, especially when you consider Nintendo's own first party IPs. I mean, Mario, Zelda, Metroid. You're telling me we could get new games in those franchises running on a handheld console that has the same level of power as a console that produced Last of Us? There are even current rumors that behind closed doors, they have the Final Fantasy VII Remake running on the Switch, and apparently it looks and plays as good as the PlayStation 5 version. So if the Switch 2 has the power of a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One X and maybe even has a graphics chip specifically designed by Nvidia for Nintendo, yeah, there is a good chance we can see some well-optimized games really utilizing the hardware here. There are so many rumors, but there's another one that behind closed doors, some developers were treated to the Switch 2. They put it in their hands and they were playing an improved version of Breath of the Wild, showcasing what the Switch 2 can do over the Switch 1. Now that's super exciting to me. I mean, if you were gonna show something off and this is what you chose to show, the difference better be night and day. It's not like they were playing it and Nintendo were like, see, when you walk into Kakariko Village, the frames don't tank anymore. <laughs> like that's not exciting. Maybe it's in 60 FPS. Maybe even other things that you're not thinking about like shadows, lighting, atmospheric effects, things that maybe were designed to be in the game but were stripped out so that it could run better on the Switch. Maybe all those are turned back back on now and the game's gone from poor to pa 
like playing it on an emulator. <laughs> hey, uh, future me here. I actually didn't realize when I wrote and I was saying all of that, that the demo that was shown at Gamescom last year is supposedly actually 4K 60 FPS. So that's exciting. Removing those limitations, especially the ones that we got on ports where the developers would have to start stripping things out to see how they can make it run on the console. Throw those back in, baby. The screen. <laughs> oh boy. It's going to be really hard to say goodbye to OLED, but say goodbye to OLED, we're probably gonna have to do. I mean, it added $50 to the Switch, and Nintendo knows that 50 bucks is make or break for a lot of consumers. To be honest though, I'm okay with it. I would rather that 50 bucks be used on the actual internal hardware for the Switch. Yeah, better graphics chip, better processor, maybe an SSD. The OLED was a really nice touch, and it helped us all in the back half of the Nintendo Switch's lifespan, taking our games and making them pop, but it kind of was like polishing a turd. Also, new LCD screens, they're not even that bad. I was a little bummed out when the PlayStation Portal was just on LCD, but honestly, the screen on the Portal is so nice, and I've never had a problem with it, so I'm really not that concerned. I'm far more concerned about sitting down on my couch and docking Mario Odyssey 2 and having it look fantastic on my TV. Then obviously, the sticks need to be improved. I mean, stick drift should never have been an issue in the first place. We have loads of third party companies at this point creating controllers and Joy-Cons for the Switch with HAL sticks, which are stick drift proof. Some people want a better battery. To be honest, the Switch's battery lasts three to four hours with most games I play, and that's more than enough. I don't know where I'm going to be at any point that I'm there for more than three hours and I don't have a way to charge my console. I think it's pretty standard for them to upgrade the Switch's Wi-Fi and connectivity. Bluetooth should be there on launch and Wi-Fi should be stronger so that we can download our games games quicker. Also, it would be really cool if we could stream our games from the Switch. Imagine portably playing the new Metroid and at the same time streaming your gameplay to Twitch. It'd be so goofy, but if there was a little camera on the console and it like had your face in it and you could stream your face and your gameplay directly from the handheld tablet. As soon as I connected the dots to better Wi-Fi streaming from my console, uh, well then they wouldn't be able to see me. What if there was a camera? And then as soon as I got that thought, I thought of Arlo's video. I I swear I am not stealing from him, but I do watch his content. He had the same idea of being able to stream your face and everything. We had the same line of thinking. I got all the way here to say that's not gonna happen though. I think adding a camera into the console for a niche purpose like that is just adding cost in something that we really don't need. I mean, technically the Switch One had a camera, the IR camera, and oh boy, didn't that get a lot of use. About 13 uses actually. Recently, Nintendo patented this wacky looking thing. It's a 3DS looking device. So it's two screens and it can be separated and you can use both at once. I gotta be honest, the idea is pretty cool. It is literally taking the Switch's idea of removing a Joy-Con and handing it to another player to a new extreme. Now you can literally hand them their own screen. Hi, future me again. I just wanna stress, cause I felt like I didn't really make it clear. I don't think this is gonna happen. Two full screens? <laughs> you know how much that would cost? I'd rather have one OLED than two LCDs. Yeah, this is just a patent. It's not uncommon for companies to come up with something and patent it just in case, but it does show us a lot about where Nintendo's mind is at right now. This idea of sharing games with people more conveniently. To play even further into this idea, you remember in Super Mario Party, there was like a mini game where you could line up two Switch tablets together and it would create one screen and the game would play between them. Well, Nintendo actually patented that concept all the way back in 2018. The tagline was plurality of display units in combination with a high degree of freedom. So they really wanted Switch tablets to be able to connect with each other wirelessly and seamlessly. It was just something they never did after that. And I have a couple ideas as to why. And I think the biggest one is the ridiculously large bezel that the original Nintendo Switch had. I mean, if you look at the patent designs, the bezel in the patent, even in 2018, was really thin. But when you put these big chunky bezels together, it ruins the effect of the display. It's also a complete dead zone for touch. So when you're trying to combine screens, it totally ruins the immersion. So my theory is the new Switch, the tablet portion will have no bezel. I mean, this is backed up even more by the OLED releasing and having an even thinner bezel. Phones don't have bezels anymore. There are phones that you can completely flip the screen and close it. There are phones 
with a curved edge. We don't need these restrictions anymore. So that's my next like solid theory is that Switch 2 will have no bezel. And maybe Nintendo will even try this multi-screen idea again in some of their games once you can actually combine them together to create bigger screens. And who says you even need a Switch to do that? Maybe you can connect to your phone somehow and use that as a bonus screen if you don't have a second Switch nearby. Speaking of mobile while we're here, let's hope and pray that Nintendo doesn't utilize a mobile app when it comes to in-game functions like voice chat. I'm honestly hesitant to even theorize that Nintendo will move away from this and make any of it local to the system because it's Nintendo and they just don't seem to understand how we play and interact with games online these days. So many multiplayer games on the Switch, third party ones, utilize in-game voice chat. And it's the only games on the Switch where anybody will use the voice chat because nobody is downloading that stupid app. That said, I do think there are uses in having connectivity with a phone. The idea of the Switch is to take it everywhere with you. The only other device you take everywhere with you is your phone. There's no reason why the two of them shouldn't interact in some way. Imagine if the steps that you take on your phone, you could upload that to your Switch and use it to hatch eggs in the new Pokemon game or just other practical uses in general. There's definitely ways that these two can connect. But all I've kept you waiting long enough what are my thoughts on backwards compatibility? You know, for most of this current Switch run, I was pretty set on the Switch 2 won't have backwards compatibility. And the main reason why, this guy didn't. This dude released with seven games. It didn't need a virtual console. It didn't need backwards compatibility. It stood on its own two legs and became one of the most successful consoles of all time. Then you look at the Wii U. That released with backwards compatibility. That released with a virtual console. And where did it get it? I thought it was a no-brainer that Nintendo would look at those two and be like, well, we found our secret to success. But over the last couple years, my line of thinking there has definitely shifted. Most of that is because of this guy. The PlayStation 5 is just as successful as the Switch and it released with backwards compatibility. So what was the big difference here? Well, going into the PlayStation 5, consumers trusted Sony. They trusted Sony to support the console and to give them loads of experiences worth buying the PlayStation. For, which, looking back on it now, it's a little ironic. But nonetheless, there was trust. And I think now with the Switch, Nintendo has that same trust. Consumers know Nintendo's gonna have a slew of first-party banger games that they will miss out on if they don't buy the Switch 2. There's just an added bonus there of having your entire library available to you on day one. And an even bigger bonus, now most of that library looks and plays better than ever before. Now don't get me wrong, I won't be surprised at all if Nintendo doesn't do backwards compatibility. It's Nintendo and they just, they make up their own rules. I actually sat down with the developer of the game Inscription on my podcast last week and I asked him the question, do you want the Switch 2 to have backwards compatibility or not? And he said he really hopes that it does because that way his game would just carry over and with no effort, he could just start selling his game on a new console. So it makes sense for us as the consumers. It makes sense as the developers and the publishers of games that are already on the Switch. I don't see a reason why Nintendo wouldn't do it. I don't really have a theory on what the games themselves will physically look like. I assume there'll be cartridges again. I mean, what are they gonna do? Do UMDs like the PSP and have a little disc spinning in there? But those cartridges will probably look pretty different to the Switch cartridges, just to lessen confusion. Kind of like with the DS and 3DS, but then they were both able to go into the same slot. Probably a similar thing here. Except the new Switch cartridges will taste like Skittles. There is one kind of backwards compatibility you might not have thought of yet, and that's the Joy-Cons. Will the original Switch 1 Joy-Cons work with the Switch 2? I think yes, but the old rail system that we have now on the Switch is kind of ugly and a little dated. So I think there might be a new way of attaching Joy-Cons, a more seamless and cool way that would even further separate the original Switch from the new one. But you'll still be able to use the old ones wirelessly. The only reason to use your old Joy-Cons would be if you're playing a two-player game and you don't want to buy a new pair of the new expensive Joy-Cons, already have Switch Joy-Cons, connect them wirelessly and give them to your little brother. He gets the old stinkies, that's tradition. The other thing would be if we're going full backwards compatibility, there are a lot of accessories like the Ring Fit. You would need to still be able to use the old Joy-Cons to plug into that to play Ring Fit on the new Switch. And this is all assuming that they upgrade this rail system. If they don't, then easy. Yeah, of course they work. As far as what new Joy-Con 2s could possibly look like, I don't really have a vision for that. I like the way these look. They're very sleek. They still look nice. 
They're not nice to hold or ergonomically designed in any way. They just look sleek. But this isn't a big deal at the end of the day because you can always buy an accessory like the Satisfy Grip and just get comfort that way. But I do think form is important. If something looks cool, it makes people want to go out and buy it. And this thing still does look, in my opinion, pretty cool. But that doesn't mean Nintendo can also do weird and wackies. A huge missed opportunity I thought Nintendo did on this console is only ever releasing just normal Joy-Cons in different colors. Other third-party developers are out here making Nintendo Switch Pro controllers or GameCube controllers cut in half that you stick on either side. Or even a controller with a D-pad, which released but not by Nintendo. This is money on the floor. I'm sure whatever they do with Joy-Cons, they will most likely be improved in ways that will help even further with immersion. Better HD rumble, maybe some PlayStation 5 haptic feedback ideas. Maybe they have magnets in them, so when you're holding both of them in your hands and you're playing a driving game, it almost feels like a steering wheel. Even better motion controls. Because if you're gonna keep putting motion controls in, they have to keep getting better. But how does Nintendo take that even further? I really want them to experiment with different Joy-Con designs. We could have normal Joy-Cons, trackpad Joy-Cons, D-pad Joy-Cons, and you just switch them all out. Attaching whatever Joy-Con makes the most sense for the game you're about to play or how you like to play games. Having a touchpad on the Steam Deck opens up the entire Steam library to be able to be played on the go. Games like Point and Clicks, which don't have native controller support, can now be played portably on the Steam Deck. Why not have a pair of Joy-Cons that have touchpads on them? You don't need to have a touchpad there all the time. That's the beauty of the Switch. You just take off the regular, put on a touchpad for when you need it, and then remove the touchpad when you don't need it. It's so perfect. That same developer I sat down with and asked him about the eShop question, I also asked if he'd port his other games to the console. And he said because they were point and clicks without native controller support, it'd be too difficult to do that. There are games that would release on the Switch if they could. Hey, so I'm watching this video back now and I actually forgot to talk about the dock. I feel like the old dock design is dated from day one. Even the refresh with the OLED curving it out, it's essentially the same thing. I don't understand why Nintendo are so hellbent on covering up the screen when it's docked. Because you could do so many cool things with a minimalistic stand that the Switch would just sit on top of and have its screen fully exposed. It could become like a clock or an alarm clock and just display the time. Maybe with a cool Mario or Zelda background, something animated that they could probably charge us for and I'd pay a lot of money for it. But it could also display the eShop. Maybe if there's a cool sale happening, like a summer sale, it could bing, that's a little ding. And then like you look over and it says, hey, switch summer sale happening now. I mean, you could do so much with that sleek design. So now I have built my perfect Nintendo Switch 2 and maybe you can kind of envision it in your mind space, but guess what? You can see it. I went to Fiverr and paid three very expensive 3D model artists to design my Switch 2. Okay, here's the first artist. So this was $270. And as of right now, after a couple of weeks, he still hasn't finished. But he sent essentially the first draft over before the final render. And it looks like a Fisher Price toy. The reason for that is because it's all block colored before he finalizes the render so I can see all the parts. But I see all the parts. The next one is the $600 artist. I'll say first up, the screen looks awesome. It's pretty much exactly what I was describing other than there's still a bezel. I said to all of these artists, please remove the bezel completely. Zach, could you edit it to have no bezel? Thanks, perfect. This next one crushed it. I tipped him like 50 bucks because of how good of a job he did. So the tablet, mwah. Oh my God, it's huge. Eight inches, if not nine inches. Like it's a massive screen with almost no bezel. He even designed a cool Switch 2 logo to coincide with his design. Like he crushed it. I don't know how I feel about the Samsung TV remote looking shape of the Joy-Cons. It's definitely in line with the rounded aspect of the screen that I wanted. Just looking at the docked Switch tablet in this really sleek, futuristic rounded dock, that's exactly what 
I was picturing. I'm gonna leave that guy's Fiverr down below if you guys want to get any 3D models done. I spent like a grand on all of these and this guy made it worth it. But what games will launch with the Switch 2? At this point, I'm starting to think that Metroid Prime 4 is gonna be a Switch 2 game. At the very least, a dual release on the first Switch and the new one. Then we also have Pokemon Legends ZA, which just got announced. And it does say it's coming to Switch as well, but it's targeting a 2025 release. Pokemon release a Pokemon game every year. This is the year they decide not to, when apparently the Switch 2 is coming in 2025? That seems a little suspicious, but my real theory, I think Nintendo needs to launch strong with a first party game. And my real theory is Mario Kart 10. It seems like such a no-brainer. Breath of the Wild released with the first Switch, and that was a huge success. And that's with Zelda not even being the main moneymaker for Nintendo. I mean, that is Mario. And I think the only other franchise series that could rival Zelda and Mario at this point for Nintendo is Animal Crossing. I still think it's too soon for a new Animal Crossing game. But also, it's not exactly something that shows off what a console can do. You release this new, exciting, Powerful handheld hybrid Nintendo Switch 2. Wow. <laughs> is a cozy, relaxing life sim where you play as a raccoon on an island. So we're left with Mario. And yeah, maybe it could be the new Mario Odyssey 2, but we just got Mario Wonder, a core Mario 2D title. And it hasn't been that much of a long window since then for people to get hyped up for the new Mario release. Even though a lot of us want it, it has not been like the 10 year long wait for a new Mario Kart. The Switch didn't even get a Mario Mario Kart. All right, future me fixing one last thing in this video. I keep calling this Mario Kart 10 and I don't really explain why. I kind of count Mario Kart Home Tour as Mario Kart 9 because it is technically a Mario Kart, but also it's just cooler to think of getting Mario Kart 10 or Mario Kart X. The name just sounds better than Mario Kart Nine. Now you could argue that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a Switch game, considering how much content they pumped into it, the fact that it ran at 60 frames and was way better on the Switch. It was still technically a Wii U game, and we've still technically been waiting for the next one all of this time. And imagine that game showcasing what the Switch 2 can do. 60 frames all day, every day, and they can throw so many more effects and ideas and poof, explosions. <laughs> they can make it look really cool and really flashy and really show off what the new hardware can do. And everybody loves Mario Kart. 60 years old, or they're a newborn five-year-old fresh out the womb. Everyone wants to grab a controller and start playing Mario Kart. It's something inherently inside all of us as a human race. Everybody loves it. And on top of that even, it's heckin' multiplayer. It's already doing well, right? Everyone's already buying it. And then other people that haven't bought it, they see their friends have it. Their friends are playing Mario Kart. And they're like, ah, I want to play with you guys. I want to play too, so they buy it. Twitch streamers all playing together and streaming it together. You know, it's going to create all of this buzz and all of this hype, this free promotion. I think it is impossible to mess up a launch like the one we've been painting a picture of already, but one that releases with a new Mario Kart. I think that could honestly be a much bigger release than the original Switch. But here's the fun part the name. What's it gonna be? <laughs> Is Nintendo really gonna pull a new Nintendo Switch UXL 3D4? The big N has never historically been that good at naming consoles. The Wii U is the obvious biggest one to prove that point. It was just very confusing what it was. It's a similar situation to the Xbox, the Xbox One, the Xbox One X, the Xbox Series X. I mean, you ask any general person the difference between any of those and they'll say, I don't care. We don't really even have to predict what the new Switch is gonna be called because the name has actually already leaked. The official YouTube account put out a survey recently of what console are you going to buy? And it was PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and Nintendo Attach. What's that? Nah, this seems too random to be like a slip up. What's the assumption here? I will say though, I don't hate the name Attach. The more I've been making this video and thinking about what the new Switch can be, and slowly I started to realize the evolution of the Switch and the basic mechanic of just connecting two Joy-Cons is, hey, let's connect more things. Like how many things can we 
attach. You can attach a microphone. You can attach VR. You know, it's just, it's a hub that brings everything together. Could be something like when the Switch was first revealed, it was revealed as the NX, and then later it got its name as the Switch. Nintendo Attach could also be a placeholder name just based on what it does. The main function that they're kind of pushing and moving towards. It's not a very clear name. I mean, it is literally like the Wii U. And the reason why people were so confused on what that was is because they thought it was a tablet attachment that you attached to the Wii. So Nintendo Switch Attach just sounds like something you would attach to the Switch. So let's forget about that. I know Nintendo has never done numbers before. I think if the Wii U had been called the Wii 2, it would have done better and been a lot more clear. And my image here of the Switch 2 being essentially a souped up Switch does lean very easily into it just being called the Switch 2. I mean, it's clear, it's concise. You don't always have to get wacky with it, Nintendo. It 100% lets consumers know exactly what this product is, but it's not very exciting and it's not very Nintendo. If we were to look at the history of Nintendo and their consoles, I would say there's only two times that they've really made a direct sequel to a home console. And that's the NES and then the Super Nintendo and then the Wii and then the Wii U. So ignoring the back half of that, we have the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo. Souped up Switch is what I've been thinking. Super Nintendo Switch. I mean, it's so cool that gives me chills. You look at the original Nintendo. I mean, at the time, it played an integral key part in saving the gaming industry. And after the Wii U, the Nintendo Switch played an integral key part in saving Nintendo's position within the gaming industry. But more than that, the Nintendo Switch was marketed as a console that brought all of the elements from all its history in console making together in one package. It reinvented the wheel. And I think Nintendo has reflected that same mantra throughout the generation of the Switch. Breath of the Wild was a reimagining of what Zelda could be. Mario Wonder was a reimagining of what a 2D Mario could be. Mostly all of Nintendo's IPs through the years have been resurrected and brought to the Switch in some form or fashion. The Switch is Nintendo's magnum opus. And to get a direct sequel to this console, just like we did back in the day with the NES, the Super Nintendo Switch. I'm really hoping. <laughs> when is the Super Nintendo Switch, a souped up 4K bezel-free version of the hybrid console that releases with multiple types of Joy-Cons that you can switch between and the best darn heckin' Mario Kart you've ever seen officially release? Probably 2025. There are some really strong rumors that the Switch 2, whatever it is Nintendo is planning, is gonna release in 2025. And that they will probably show it off sometime in summer this year, around Summer Game Fest and when E3 usually is and that time of year. Apparently they were originally planning to release it this year, but they wanted to make sure there wasn't gonna be any part shortages and that they'd have enough consoles on launch. So the best thing for them to do was to push it into next year. I mean, for the last several years, I kept saying 2024 is what seemed most likely for a new Switch, and I think it's pretty clear that we need it. I mean, we're in the final year of this guy for sure, and it feels that way. It would be great to get something new now or for holiday this year. But the fact that we haven't heard or seen anything officially from Nintendo yet, and we have games like Pokemon ZA getting pushed to 2025 and just generally nothing for this year, it seems pretty clear that we're a little ways off just yet. I played it relatively safe, I think. Mostly because I think this is just what we need. You know, the thing is with Nintendo though, is you can never predict what they're going to do. Every time there's some new wacky idea that we didn't think we need, and then we either end up liking it or hating it. But end of the day, it doesn't really matter what it is to me. As long as I can sit here and enjoy Breath of the Wild like that, or any new experience that gets thrown at me, I'll be pretty happy. You have to try pretty hard to mess that up for me, Nintendo. Please don't make me regret these words. <laughs>